people are going to have their summer holidays delayed or cancelled because of chaos that we've just seen at airports? Well, they absolutely mustn't. And uh, the airports and the airlines, the travel industry need to make sure it's sorted out. We met with them uh, earlier in the year. They asked us to speed up some of the processes, for example, getting uh, people through the security clearance if they're working uh, behind the scenes at the airports. Uh, and I made a change in the law to make that easier and faster. Uh, and, uh, you know, now I, we need the industry itself to deliver. Very important that flights don't, aren't oversold, for example. Uh, and I want to make sure that there's automatic compensation for passengers. But we'll work with the industry very hard between now and the summer to make sure we don't see a repeat of those uh, scenes. Um, clearly, they've been taken by surprise by the way in which people have returned to travel after two years of being locked down. I I'm not surprised. We were saying all along, you will need to be ready for this. It's not very far away, though. I mean, it's only weeks away, really, six, seven, eight weeks away until the summer holidays. It's not going to be fixed in time for that, is it? It takes ages to train people, and there's a huge staff shortage. Yes, and I think the, the, the cuts went too deep. I and mean, we had the furlough programme. I appreciate all the uncertainty about coronavirus. Of course, this country was able, in the end, to come out of uh, coronavirus um, the fastest. Uh, so that, that also uh, will perhaps take them by surprise. Because we're not the only people with the, the same problems. I was looking at what's happening in Schiphol and around Europe, and also in America, where 2,500 flights were cancelled this weekend, um, to see that it's a global problem of rehiring people in very, very uh, tight employment markets. We've got record high levels of employment, record low unemployment levels. Uh, and as a result, uh, they're finding it difficult to get people on board. But we've done, we've already taken some measures. Uh, I've got some further measures on security uh, that I'll be um, taking. But principally, it's down to the uh, airport operators and the airlines to make sure they both match the number of tickets they sold with their capacity to deliver it, uh, but also where there are problems. And we understand that but there will be problems in, in you know, a market like this, that they sort it out quickly. And that's why I'm also going to be focusing then, on the compensation uh, the passengers. Yes, but get. absolutely, they're not going to be able to sort it out quickly, are they? And people must accept that there will be problems. Well, uh, look, they're off, it's often busy during the summer uh, that, that we, we accept that or was before coronavirus. We, pe people, people sort of know that. But at the same time, I, I do think when someone's bought a, a ticket uh, for, a, for a flight, uh, they've every right to expect that flight will take off and not find that flight's then been uh, cancelled. So, you know, clearly airlines should be cautious about not overselling these flights. Where there are problems, they need to fix them um, quickly. Uh, and uh, we, we're going to work with them. Uh, and that working group's already set up uh, on a daily basis between now and, as you say, probably a six-week window but the problem to do is everything staff, the problem, possible to make sure this is resolved. The 